bearing life distribution of Rawling contact bearings is almost never a normal distribution. For a specific load, some samples will start failing before the 90% reliability life value that is reported by manufacturers, and some will fail well above that number of cycles. If we were to create a histogram of the number of samples that fail for different numbers of cycles, we'd see that the range with the highest value is not right in the center, like it would be for a normal distribution. We would see that there are a lot more samples that fail for a number of cycles that is higher than the number of cycles with the highest value. These types of results are great to be modeled as a Weibull distribution, as this distribution can be adjusted for different amount of skewness. In this case, we would say that the distribution is skewed to the right since the tail of the density function is on the right. The value that manufacturers report for the bearing life L10, which we already know is the number of cycles for which only 10% of the samples have shown signs of fatigue failure and therefore 90% are still okay, should correspond to the value for which the area under the probability function curve from that value upward is exactly 90%. So what we're seeing when looking at one data point in the log log plot we talked about during the previous video, link below, each data point on it is telling us where the 90% reliability life occurs for a specific load. We could also see the life in number of cycles for 80% reliability, for example, or the life for a 60% reliability, or the life for a 95% reliability. And we could even create a line that passes through all the 60% reliability points for different forces. What we would see is that this line has the same slope, obviously, as the Weibull distribution shape itself is not changing for different force values, and we could conclude that this parallel line is shifted to the right for lower reliability values and shifted to the left for higher reliability values. Which makes sense. If I want to guarantee that 99% of my samples have not yet shown any signs of fatigue failure, I would report a bearing life in number of cycles that is way lower to the bearing life I would report if only 90% of the samples have not failed. We will not dive into the specifics of how Weibull distributions work, since that's a topic that you hopefully have already covered in a probability and statistics course, and more importantly, because we really don't need to understand all the varying parameters of Weibull distributions. What we need to know for bearing selection applications is that the reliability R for a Weibull distribution of the life measure X is given by this exponential expression where X0 is the guaranteed or minimum value of X, theta is the characteristic parameter, which for Rawling contact bearings is the 63 percentile value of X, and B is the shape parameter, which refers to how much the bell shape is skewed to the right, which in the case of Rawling contact bearings is always close to 1.5. The specific values for x0 and theta will be given by the manufacturer when testing production samples to report the specs of the bearings. Finding the Weibull parameters is part of their testing procedure. To understand what x0 means, we first need to understand what x in general means. The same load versus life plot we've been working with also works for when life is substituted by a dimensionless variable x. This dimensionless life measure x is defined as L over L sub 10, the rating life from the catalog. X sub 10 would be 1, as it would be L10 over L10, and X0 would be the lowest value of cycles for which the first sample fails, which if using the Weibull distribution to fit all the data, is just a parameter that you find statistically. It wouldn't really be the number of cycles for which the first sample fails. But again, that's the manufacturer's responsibility to list. Just as in the same way, the characteristic parameter theta would also depend on the Weibull plot you obtain from the data and is also the manufacturer's responsibility to list. Now for what we'll use this for. Let's say we know the desired load. Again, like I mentioned in previous examples, we know the load that goes into the bearing because we can calculate torques and gear forces from power and speed information and with them forces that go through the shaft into the bearings. We also know our bearing's rotation speed because we know how fast the shaft is rotating and we know how long the system should operate for. If we don't want the system to fail from any component, including the bearings, we know the desired life by multiplying the speed times the time the system will be operating and of course correcting for units. So in general, we always have the desired life and the desired load. And of course the desired life can be written as a dimensionless variable if we divide by L10 the rating life of the manufacturer. Our desired life will of course not match with the rating life the vendor used to test the bearings they sell, so we know we need to perform a similar process to what we covered in the last video. The problem now is that I also don't want 10% of my bearings to fail. To be fair, this is not exactly what's going to happen. 
but having a 90% reliability does mean that there's a 10% chance that my bearing will fail before it reaches the number of cycles I want it to reach. So if for example I'm trying to have a 95% reliability, I know that the manufacturer's rated line on which X10 and C10 are located is a parallel line to the line my desired life and desired load are located on. And I know that my line, which is a higher reliability value, is to the left of the rated line because of the analysis we covered earlier. Higher to the left, lower to the right. I also know that inside this plot, the horizontal line from the rated line to my line, that is the horizontal distance from the 90% line to the 95% line in this case, can be found if I start at X10, which is the dimensionless manufacturer's rated life, and solve for x using the reliability equation and a reliability value of 95. We'll call this value of x, xb. To understand this more easily, we can drop this 2D plot on the floor of a 3D plot, where the third axis is the Weibull distribution values. We don't know where c10 is. That is exactly what we're trying to find, the catalog load rating. But wherever it is, I can move from X10, which is a 90% reliability, so that the new area under the curve is 95%. Using the reliability equation and finding X for 95% reliability, or whatever other value I want, I'm effectively moving left, since the X variables are coincidentally on the X axis. Again, from the rated line of 90 to the desired line of 95, or any other value you want. My desired life and load would still be there, located on a line of known slope, since I know for example that the A coefficient is 3 for ball bearings. So if I know that when moving left from X10, I need to land exactly on the 95% line I want, I'm effectively finding the value of C10 by moving this Weibull curve up or down until the landing point is on the 95% line. And this is how I find C10, the catalog load rating. In summary, to get from my desired operation point, capital D, to the C10 value I'm trying to find to choose a bearing from a catalog list, and we'll call this capital A, I would need to go from D to B, which is directly to the left of A. Going from D to B would be achieved by using the concepts we used during the last video, knowing that on the same line, F times L to the 1 over A is constant or in this case f times x to the 1 over a since we're using the dimensionless life measure x instead of l. And of course by previously knowing the dimensionless life of b, xb, found through the reliability equation from today. Since the force of b, fb, is in the same y-axis value as the catalog load rating c10, this is the expression we would use to find the catalog load rating when the reliability we're looking for is different than the one the manufacturer uses. One more thing that is usually included in this expression is the application factor A sub F, which serves as a factor of safety for the selection of the bearing. Let's look at a deep groove bearing selection problem where the manufacturer rates its bearings for 10 to the 6 revolutions and reports Weibull parameters of 0.02 for X0, theta minus X0 equal to 4.439 and 1.483 for B. If my design will generate a radial load on the ball bearing of 250 pounds while the shaft is rotating at 350 revs per minute and I want the bearing to last at least 20,000 hours with a reliability of 99%, what is the catalog load rating C10 that I should be looking for if I also want to use an application factor of 1.2? From the expression we developed today, I know that the denominator is taking care of going from a 90% reliability to my desired reliability of 99%. The manufacturer has given us the x0 and the theta minus x0 values, as well as the b exponent. So if I use an rd value of 0.99, I would effectively be finding the dimensionless life measure xb. I have the application factor and the load that my bearing is going to be subjected to, in pounds. So I know that c10 will be in pounds as well. A deep groove bearing, if I don't know what that is, would be looked up and found to be a ball bearing. So A would be equal to 3. The only thing I'm missing from this equation is the dimensionless life measure XD, the desired dimensionless life. I know that this is dimensionless because I'm dividing the desired life by L10, the life that the manufacturer uses to rate its bearings. My desired life will be found by multiplying the rotation speed times the time I want my bearing to last and correcting for units. The rating life would be found in the catalog. 
This calculation gives me a value of 420 for the desired dimensionless life. With these values, I would find a catalog load rating of 3,724 pounds. If the manufacturer lists its bearings in metric units, I would just convert pounds to kilonewtons. This high value compared to the given force of 250 makes sense because I want my bearing to last 420 million cycles instead of just 1 million and I want a high reliability at 99% instead of 90. I'm leaving a link to the solution of a similar problem in the description of this video. Up to this point, we've only been looking at the radial force that goes into a bearing, assuming that the axial force or thrust is zero. While that's still true for many applications, in the next video we will talk about combined radial and thrust loading. Fortunately for us, everything we've learned so far is still applicable, since the only thing we'll do then is come up with an equivalent force that kind of combines both the radial and axial loads into one so that we can still keep using the equations and expressions we've developed so far. Thanks for watching.